teeth with their toothpick, bamboo made. You just put it there and put the other wing on it at the right height. And then the other wing, the same thing, three more toothpicks, only three, three toothpicks, because it floats. This is going on top. It's all granite. Just think about it. It's supposed to be all granite. This and cave in the granite. So the air passes. So if it is all granite, then the hole you got there is the breather, God's breath, just like you are breathing. Well, if it's breathing, the hole that's there goes up at the top of this. It's built upon a stone end. So is David Hamill simply an eccentric, suffering from delusions and dreaming impossible dreams? Maybe. But it is worth noting NASA are currently working on an anti-gravity flying disc that is not at all dissimilar from David Hamill's design. It's high time that they do recognize what I'm doing is a large work and not foolishness. And if the TV cameras that are taking me in the picture. I hope they take my word for real, for real, not foolishness. 34, 35. I have the same feeling as I have when I'm looking in the fire. Something links me to the future. Ryder Fintrud is a Norwegian and lives in a small fishing village just outside Oslo. He is not a mechanic, engineer, nor scientist. He is an artist. Did I start to create art? What is art? But as well as being an extraordinarily prolific and creative artist and sculptor, Ryder is also a visionary and a mathematician. When I first started to think about the pellet to motion machine, I thought about the wheel. This wheel is something else. The weight is on the top of the wheel. And from this position you can start working. I think you have to do something else. You have to do something. And so I start with the pendulums. I look at the wheel and put strings on all over it. So it comes up. When I had a lot of hanging parts, it's come up. Amazing. It was the yin and yang system. And then it started to be so amazing. So I couldn't go to sleep. I had to stay awake and, and make this machine. What was the beginning? What was the meaning with the yin and yang? This is the mathematical symbol for the force, the free force. Ryder Finchwood works 18 hours a day, seven days a week, and his obsessive nature shows clearly in this self-portrait. Ryder genuinely believes that, scaled up, his perpetual motion machine could well form the foundation upon which a new egalitarian society could be built, with everyone receiving free energy. And in fear that there may be those who would wish to suppress such a possibility, he keeps his machine locked away in a vault in the basement of his gallery. But is it perpetual motion? The beauty of Ryder's machine is the harmonious relationship between the ball, the magnets, and the pendulums. The ball is attracted to the horseshoe magnets, but the swing of the pendulums ensures these are lowered just in time to allow the ball to pass. Then this small round magnet is momentarily attracted to the ball, 
which sets off a series of fulcrums and springs attached to the much heavier pendulum hidden within the main brass stem of the machine. This central pendulum is surrounded by powerful magnets that force it to bend this spring and so oscillate the track in such a way as to ensure it is at all times slightly lower just in front of the ball. These springs in the center of the track are there to give the three smaller pendulums an extra boost each time the ball passes over them, thus ensuring they do not lose any of their momentum. In order to generate electricity, the ball would have to have enough momentum to, say, hit the arm of a paddle wheel each time it passes. And once you have an axle that turns, you have the ability to generate electricity. But the importance of Ryder's machine cannot be overstated. Over the three days it was filmed, the ball maintained a constant speed measured to 1 25th of a second. There would therefore appear to be no reason why this machine should not continue to run forever. Perpetual motion. Something that for 300 years conventional science has said is impossible. A proposition we put to a senior university lecturer in physics. When I looked at this device I was amazed by the ingenuity which had gone into this. If the ball is heavy it's not going to get lifted off the track and at the same time if the rib magnet on the top if that has a pivotal connection to the rest of the system so that it can easily move up and down it will move down towards the ball normally the efficiency of any device is about 20 30 40 50 percent this device may have an efficiency of the order of 80 and 90 percent and I have even read some literature which says it has 99% efficiency. When you consider that the internal combustion engine is only 30% efficient, 99% is an extraordinary score. But only at 100% can this machine qualify as perpetual motion. At 101% it can be said to produce surplus and therefore free energy. Where is the power coming from? I had scientists from all over the world looking at it and they can't tell me where the power is coming from. The claim that this is going to run permanently or indefinitely doesn't seem to hold because the second law of thermodynamics tells us that this is not possible. The fellow from Norway sounds sincere enough, but I really don't think he can come out ahead with just magnets, wires, and wheels. But what of Aldo Costa and his claim for the $10,000 perpetual motion prize? Eric Krieg surprised everyone in his final response to Aldo Costa's challenge. Indeed, it appeared as though Mohammed really had come to the mountain. There must be something special about it more than a... Yeah, uh, and wooden. then uh, everybody, there's this... Everywhere, you have this little masses, which is two right. kilograms each. Wow, this thing is huge. See how this works. Not only, it seems, had Aldo done the maths, but with every nut, bolt, and rivet, he had backed his absolute belief that contrary to the current laws of physics, energy can be produced by a fuelless machine. He had, he believed, found the holy grail of science perpetual motion. It was a nice view of the French countryside from high up in the air here. It is impressive that one old man built all of this himself. Six, onze, douze, treize, quatorze, quinze, seize, dix-sept.
Monsieur Eric, quand on l'arrête, la roue, on la tient. On la lâche. Pourquoi elle repart So, when the wheel is stopped, why did the wheel start again Some friction is variable. There are other sources of power that can come in. The wind can make a slight amount of power. The sun hitting one side and not the other side can expand it a little bit and make it counterbalance that it might move. From my experience with science and engineering, I can't see how this would ever be a source for external energy. In fact, with all the different sources of friction on this, I don't believe it can be a perpetual motion machine. Euh, pour lui, il voit pas où d'où la, la, la puissance viendrait. Par contre, il voit beaucoup où la puissance pourrait être dissipée par euh, notamment toutes les, tous les mécanismes de friction. D'après toutes les explications que vient de me donner M. Eric, euh, les objections sont, sont réelles. Il, il les pense vraiment. Mais c'est l'opinion d'un seul homme. Et ça s'arrête là. That, said Aldo, is the opinion of just one man. And the wheel keeps on turning. <laughs>